Would you prefer to get a theme from the audience or just begin something yourself, Baron? I thought there was a theme in the channel. Is there? Excellent. Yeah. Yes. Then you've read and prepared better than I have. <laughs> Why, yes, I have. <laughs> what is that theme, or what is that story seed? Egbert the Fool has been assigned to... Giacomo? Darn it. Giacomo! Giacomo. Yeah. Thank you. The Fool has been assigned to erect the maypole in the grand field. Okay. And he must collect a team, because he can't do it himself. It is too tall and too large. Unfortunately, he's also selected a crooked pole. Sounds like a good start. Keep going. Oh. <laughs> so, he begins to assemble his team. Come with me, come with me. It's time to assemble the maypole. I've got to work in the fields. No, I've got to catch that pig. Uh, there's a bird over there and a squirrel over there. I'm busy. <laughs> I'll go, said the little girl. What about me, said the little boy. We can help you. We're too small. We're not. We're strong. And we're smart. And I'll get my dad. I'll get my dad. But there was a problem with that crooked pole. Oh, Stanislaus Wazinski couldn't be trusted at all. <laughs> but the little boy and the little girl and Jacopo the Pants Painter, or whatever his name was, trusted him. <laughs> so they stood him up in a field and pointed and laughed and then they sent him off to get the ribbons to come back in with a real pole to wrap up. I'm not awake yet. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I'm sorry, and what happened? They, they sent him off to get streamers and, yeah. get a real, and, a stream. and get a real pole. Well, they scoured the forest for a, a fell tree, a fallen tree that would fit the bill of the real maypole uh, so that it would stand straight and tall and not fall over on the dancers when they tried to <laughs> <laughs> And um, they cast about and there was a, uh, a very nice maypole kind of that had come down in the last storm. And so they look at the maypole and they Walk around and say, mm hmm, look straight, look straight, okay, okay. Well, we don't want the branches on, so we need to get the branches off before we bring the maple to the green. Anybody have an axe? Anybody have a saw? And of course, the fool has forgotten the axe, and the small children are not allowed to play with sharp objects. And so they find a nearby beaver who has been. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> working on his home. And so one of the small children, the little girl, says, I have a plan. We will lure the beaver over. I have some snacks. We'll lure the beaver over, and we'll get the beaver to gnaw off. We'll get the beaver to gnaw off some of these branches. However, the beaver was feeling lazy that day, so it was more difficult than usual to, to lure him over. So I started shaking the little branches so the beaver could see how toothsome and lithe and green they were in, in the hopes that the beaver would, would enjoy this. Finally, after begging the beaver, enticing the beaver and all of that, they simply asked the beaver. The beaver said, oh, oh, is that what you want? <laughs> oh, I got the teeth for this. So the beaver comes over. Boop. The beaver comes over and uh, took off his braces because he had bent in the orthodontist. And he's, he's, <laughs> he starts gnawing off the branches. And he gnaws and he gnaws and he gnaws some more. And he keeps on gnawing just because he likes to gnaw things. And it's fun to say gnaw. I'm going to keep saying gnaw. <laughs> Until at last, between the beavers very sharp teeth, and Giacomo the Fool's razor-sharp wit. <laughs> the, the, the maypole was a totally denuded of branches, and it was firmly seated in the middle of the great field, and everybody gathered and gazed yeah. upon it and said, this is a most excellent maypole. We shall name him Ladislaus. 
<laughs> and this, everybody applauded. And, and the most agile youth in the village took the streamers and climbed up the beautiful maypole and took, tacked the streamers down on top of the, top of the maypole. But unfortunately, the youth were so energetic, they tipped over the maypole, breaking it in two. So now they had to find another pole. So they saw a very well dressed pole walk down the street. It was Basili from North Skogan. <laughs> <laughs> Graciously came over and picked up part of the maypole with the ribbon so, and held it high so everybody could dance around. <laughs> As he looked fabulous in his outfit at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so the, everybody started dancing around, unfortunately wrapping Basili up in the ribbons, which he did not care because he still looked fabulous and had all his feathers. <laughs> <laughs> However, that led to Giacomo, I'm sorry, Basili, the other fool, uh, <laughs> being wrapped up in the ribbons. And Giacomo of the sharp wit said, However, shall we fee free Basili? Up popped the local town goat. <laughs> <laughs> I can help free Basili. Those ribbons look mighty tasty. Meanwhile, the beaver, who had gnawed the original pole, was like, Yes, those ribbons do look tasty. So then, the, I wish I had a beaver. Anyway, <laughs> don't quote <poke> me. <laughs> the beaver and the cat. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> the beaver came over and started to nibble on, on one of the ribbons. The goat trying to shove past him sort of nudged him, and the beaver, still keeping the ribbon in his mouth, came sort of off the ground. Whoop. And said, Ha! Huh, I see you wish to duel, Sir Goat! <laughs> in order that we may decide who gets to eat the ribbons. And the goat says, well, I do. But how shall we duel? We duel of wit? No, it's teeth versus horns. And the beaver struck and started to gnaw the goat's horns off, and one horn was removed entirely. <laughs> Now the goat had to concede that he did. <laughs> the beaver has dehorned me. Shame on you, shame on you, beaver. I need a cutting device. I'll ax someone for it. And I'll have my revenge. I'll split that beaver. <laughs> At this point, for no apparent reason, the village idiot passes through. <laughs> and for some reason, they gave an axe to the village idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Who then says, no, I will go after the beaver for you, old good go. I'll get that bad beaver for you. <laughs> so it's like, the village idiot chased after the beaver. He tripped, fell, and... <laughs> The, the goat, was, no, the beaver was... Fool had the axe. The fool had the axe, yes. <laughs> the fool had the axe. I have the tail. <laughs> <laughs> and the... The beaver saw the fool fall. And the fool fall very... The fool fell very well because it was fall. Just by... Uh. Maybe it's maple? <laughs> <laughs> it is in the antiquities. <laughs> oh, so the fool is going after the beaver with the axe, but he fell because it was fall. Uh, despite the maple. Despite the maple. <laughs> Which also fell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but then the little so girl ran up and said, Oh no, Giacomo, you can't. The, the, the beaver has been so helpful in trying to, you know, in, in with the, it's because of the beaver that we have a maple at all, and, and you cannot, you, you cannot smite this beaver. Oh! Meanwhile, the goat is saying, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> but 
had Takamo being the wit that he was, agreed. Which still, of course, left poor Bazili tied up in the ribbons. This was not so much of a problem as it seemed because Bazili, being himself a witty person, said, oh no, how shall I become undone of all these ribbons? The and so he began to spin and dance, as Vasily does, and lo and behold, the ribbons unswung themselves, and he was free of the maple. Thus ends our tale. <laughs> Now, do any of you have a moral for this story? I'm the village lady, and I really don't have anything to do with this pathetic little opera. I just felt like passing through. Deeper. <laughs> oh, right. Thank you. Yes. Because being a jester, no, a jester is nobody's fool.